Member for West Vancouver Capilano. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Halfway through a 10-year uh, housing plan announced in 2018, the NDP have abandoned it and admitted defeat. The Premier is failing on every housing, is failing on housing by every measure. Is it funny that we don't have enough housing in this province? I don't think so. There are unprecedented levels of homelessness and social disorder. The housing hub has turned into a colossal housing flub and wasn't even mentioned in today's housing plan. BC continues to have the highest rents in the country and the most unaffordable housing in all of North America. BC housing is so dysfunctional that four out of five applications are sitting on desks there unapproved. The Premier's so-called housing refresh strategy is, has no credibility while BC housing remains a disaster and the government continues to hide its forensic audit. Honourable Speaker, after the Premier has utterly failed as housing minister, how can he convince anyone to believe his new promises? Minister of Housing. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much, Honourable Speaker. And uh, uh, again, uh, many times in this House, we've recognized that housing continues to be a challenge here in British Columbia. Record numbers of people coming to British Columbia for good opportunities. We welcome them. We want them here. We need them here. We hear from employers all the time. We need more people. How can we find more people? And they're coming, Honourable Speaker. But with that, and rising interest rates, uh, we are seeing additional pressures on our housing market. That's why, Honourable Speaker, that the plan that we brought in 2017 took, had uh, significant improvements in our housing stock. We saw over 43,000 units have opened up because of the plan that we laid out. We're on track to meet our goals, Honourable Speaker, but we know we need more. We know we need more, Honourable Speaker, and that's why today we laid out the plan to ensure that we can position British Columbia in an even better place in the years ahead. Honourable Speaker, we know as a government that decades of underinvestment, decades of lack of investment uh, in this province has led us to this problem. And you know, some would suggest that the solution to this challenge is to uh, get out of the way and do nothing. Honourable Speaker, we've seen that formula. We've seen that formula in this, gov in this previous government for a long time. It didn't work. It's actually the reason why we're in this problem now. That's why the actions we're taking on. Members. Members, members, let's hear the answer. Minister the, will continue. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. And the member across the way says taxes, and she's, uh, she's referring to the speculation tax, Honourable Speaker. We know, we know the Leader of the Opposition, Honourable Speaker. Members. We know, Honourable Speaker, that the Leader of the Opposition doesn't like the speculation tax. He thinks it's unfair for people who have multiple homes to have to pay an additional tax, Honourable Speaker. It's clear, Honourable Speaker, who the Leader of the Opposition works for. Honourable Speaker, on our side of the House, we're going to continue to work for people because we know this housing is vitally important. Member for West Vancouver Capilano Supplemental. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Um, I would like to um, uh, remind uh, the Minister of what I said in the initial question, is that British Columbia has the highest rents in the country and is the most unaffordable housing in North America, and this is a two-term government. Mm -hmm. So obviously what is happening is, is not working, and I would like to address the speculation uh, NDP MLAs own 102 properties, and since the last election, NDP MLAs have profited by almost 8.5 million on real estate sales. So let's talk about speculation and what side of the house we're looking at. Wow. 8.5 million. Members. 102 properties. Members. Order, please. So, Honourable Speaker, instead of trying to build his way out of a housing crisis, the Premier is trying to spin his way out of it. But a flashy branding exercise can change the fact that housing affordability is getting worse. Even worse, the Premier's housing plan lacks transparency. Take the Premier's... Members. I'll, I'll follow the... Shh. Members. The Minister of Housing's approach to speaking out in the... House here. Um, take the Premier's uh, promise to end, end single-family housing 
for example, with no information about how that would work. The government couldn't even answer basic questions like where would this apply? So here's a basic question, Honourable Speaker. In which communities will the Premier be ending single-family zoning? Minister of Housing. Well, thank you, Honourable Speaker, and uh, I think it's important to note, uh, and I'm sure the members across the way hear this as well, overwhelmingly, when I'm in my community and communities around the province, I hear from seniors. I hear from seniors talking about how they're going to have their grandkids to be able to grow up near them. I hear from young families who want to stay in British Columbia. They want to have their kids grow up in the same neighbourhood that they grew up in, Honourable Speaker. And that's been a, a challenge for people over the last two decades, lack of investments in British Columbia and housing, Honourable Speaker. And so, yeah, we're proud of the changes that we're gonna, we've proposed as part of the housing strategy. And, and, the, and the member, if the member was serious, Honourable Speaker, and wanted to be part of the solution, she would look at her own community in West Vancouver and say to her community that, yes, we need to bring on more housing, Honourable Speaker. She should be serious. If the opposition is serious about housing, I say join us. Welcome. Welcome them on this side of the House, Honourable Speaker. We are going to allow for more units to be built on single dwelling homes. Honourable Speaker, we know that these lots, they may have single family homes built on them. And that's okay, Honourable Speaker. Because in the end of the day, as long as people want them, and as long as people can afford them, they'll continue to be built. The market will decide, but we need to allow more options on those sites, Honourable Speaker. And that's why this is such a, a fantastic policy that's being applauded by, across the board from all stakeholders. What we don't know, Honourable Speaker, is besides them saying that we're going to get out of the way and do nothing, what do they offer? What are they offering? Because we know, we know, Honourable Speaker, when they were on this side of the House, they did nothing on housing. 